zero indexes. Now we have a very interesting question here. Um, if a to the power of three is equal to a times a times a, a squared equal to a times a, so a to the power of one equal to a, then what is the values of a to the power of zero? So what do you think? Let's see how do we get the values of this, eh? okay? Now, from here, we can see that actually a squared is equal to a cubed divided by a, right? Okay, a cubed is uh, a times a times a, and after we divide it by a, they become a times a, that's a squared, okay? So a squared equal to a cubed divided by a, and we also learned that a to the power of one is equal to a squared divided by a. And therefore, we can deduce that a to the power of zero is equal to a to the power of one divided by a, and this is equal to one. And therefore, the zero index for any numbers is equal to one. Okay, so any base raised to the power of zero is one. So a to the power of zero equal to one. Let's say 615 to the power of zero is equal to one, even the number is very, very big, like um, two millions. To the power of zero is equal to one, and the zero index for a uh, negative number is equal to one, and 0 0.00123 uh, to the power of zero is equal to one, and the zero index for any uh, fractions like uh, 623, uh, 1 over 623 to the power of zero is equal to one. Okay, so the values of any numbers raised to the power of zero is equal to one. Okay, just now we learned that um, a squared equal to a cubed divided by a, and uh, a to the power of one equal to a squared divided by a, and a to the power of zero equal to a to the power of one divided by a equal to one. How about a to the power of negative one? Okay, two, one, zero, negative one, and also a to the power of negative two, and a to the power of negative three. Okay, now we can use the same method. Uh, uh, to deduce the values of uh, a to the power of negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Yeah? Okay, so um, since a to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and therefore a to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1 divided by a. Yeah? 1 divided by a. Okay, um, how about a to the power of negative 2? This is equal to a to the power of negative 1 divided by a, and we know that n to the power of negative 1 is 1 over a, so it's 1 over a divided by a, and this is equal to 1 over a squared, and a to the power of negative 3 is equal to a to the power of negative 2 divided by a, so this is equal to 1 over a squared divided by a, and this is equal to 1 over a to the power of 3. Okay. So from here, we can conclude that a to the power of negative n is the reciprocals of a n. a to the power of negative n equal to 1 divided by a n, and this is called the reciprocals of a n. For example, 5 to the power of negative 2, this is equal to 1 over 5 squared. Um, 201... Uh, sorry, 210 to the power of negative 5 is equal to 1 over 210 to the power of 5. Uh, 0 0.006 to the power of negative 2 will be equal to 1 over 0 0.006 square. Okay. Um, how about fractions? Let's say we have 2 over 3 divided by, oh, sorry, 2 over 3 to the power of negative 3. Okay, the reciprocals of 2 over 3 is 3 over 2. So it will become 3 over 2 
square. Okay, um, the last one, 1, 2 over 3, negative 3, to the power of negative 3. And then uh, for this one, we need to change this uh, mixed fractions to improper uh, fractions. Okay, so this become um, 5 over 3 to the power of negative 3, and the reciprocals of uh, 5 over 3 is 3 over 5. So it becomes 3 over 5 to the power of 3. Okay, so this is how we find the values of negative integral indexes.